Hey guys, Chad here with Atman Daily Bourbon, and today we're going to be talking about Thomas H. Handy. So everyone knows Thomas H. Handy is a member of the BTAC lineup. It is a six-year-old cast-strength rye coming from Buffalo Trace with a retail price, according to Buffalo Trace, of $99, which is nuts because I think that the average cost on this bottle for a retail store is about $120 in my area. Just going with my little bit of insider knowledge that I do have. For people who are nuts about the paper, um, I hear you loud and clear. Uh, when I got, I won this bottle in a lottery. When I got it, this is what it looked like. Sorry to this point. I also may have done craziness here trying to open it up. But one cool thing about this, so this is a 2021 Thomas H. Handy. And it was the first year, and let's see if you can see that there, that they did the NFC on the inside of it. So I could take my phone, tap it to this, and it would actually tell me if, it had, if the bottle had been opened or if it was still sealed. So very, very fun little tidbit there. So this is coming in at 129.5 proof, limited edition barrel proof. I'm not going to read the back of this. I guess I will read the back of this. Bear with me. I always like putting the info out there. In 1830, Thomas H. Handy was born in Maryland. Meanwhile, down in New Orleans, a number of saloons veiled as coffee houses began lining the streets of the French Quarter. A young man named Antoine Picard Jr. began serving cocktails made with brandy and a secret family recipe for bitters. The cocktail became famous and was dubbed the Sazerac Cocktail after the Sazerac Coffee House on Royal Street, or Royale Street, I'm not sure. In 1847, Thomas H. Handy arrived in New Orleans. He immediately went to work for John Schiller at a liquor store on Royal Street. Schiller eventually bought the Sazerac Coffee House and Handy quickly became an expert barman concocting fabulous Sazerac cocktails for his patrons. In 1869, Handy's friend and boss, John Schiller, died. Handy bought the coffee house and, was at, and asked his friend Picard to join to join him in business. It was that great age of coffee houses in New Orleans and there was no, there was one on every corner. The New Orleans Times paper published an article stating the oldest and best known, best of these houses is the Sazerac. Thomas H. Handy was established and successful but never content. In 1873, he altered the recipe of the Sazerac cocktail by replacing French brandy with American rye whiskey. <sighs> Patrons preferred the taste of the rye whiskey over brandy because it was more robust and spicy. The whiskey had a bouquet of pepper and clove and wonderful and wonderful flavors including citrus and candied fruit. Thomas H. Handy uncut and unfiltered straight rye whiskey is bottled directly from the barrel, just as it was a century ago. Enjoy the authentic American rye whiskey as a symbol of the timeless history of New Orleans and legacy of Thomas H. Handy. Whew. So as you can see, I've had a little bit of this. I won this earlier this year in a lottery, as I said at the beginning of the video. I am a fan of Buffalo Trace, as, as most people are. I'm a fan of their products. I do not hunt for Buffalo Trace products. I don't really hunt in general. Um, being that I work in liquor retail, I don't have time to go hunt for bourbon anymore. I used to. I used to have every other Friday off and I could go do that. I wouldn't chase trucks. I would just go to stores. If I'm lucky, I'm lucky. These days, I deal with that side of it and the extreme portion of it. I was never, I was never extreme at all, but I was never as bad as some people are today. Never go to a retail store and cuss someone out because of an allocation they do or do not have. It's kind of crazy. Um, it's allocated, it's not a guarantee. If I stumble upon a Buffalo Trace product, or if I get the opportunity to purchase something at retail or even slightly above retail, this was purchased at retail, I think I paid $129.99 before tax for it, and I'm very happy for that. Which brings me to my next point. Before we even get too far into this video, this is a six year cash strength rye, limited run. There are a ton of six year ryes out there Maybe not at 129 and a half proof, but similar age and at least 100 to 120 without going the MGP route. You've got Knob Creek, you've got Rare Breed, and you've got Russell's. All three of those are very good ryes, very similar recipes to this. And all three of those are on the shelf every day. And another one would be Woodenville Rye, Woodenville Cash Drink Rye Whiskey, and it is 100% rye. So no, no corn, no malted barley. But it is not sold in Kentucky, but at some point I will be doing a a video on those versus this. Let's give it a nose. A little hint of dill up front on the nose. Nice rye bread, like just a hint of that breadiness in there with some with a punch of cinnamon and clove. Getting a very fresh herbal tea leaf grassy note. Nice punch of ginger. It's got a really good ginger note in there, a good bit of honey. 
some oak, obviously. Um, you're also gonna get some bitter tannins, uh, you know, 129 proof. Let's give it a taste. So obviously at 129 proof, it's hot, it's dry, it's tannic, hits the hits every corner of the mouth, kind of salivate a little bit. But it's got a, a friggin' delicious, like citrus note, burnt orange peel. You know, you zest the orange, you squeeze the orange, you light the orange, you throw it in an old fashioned, and you, that's the aroma I'm getting, but on my palate. Like I'm tasting that orange oil, a little bit of cherry. It's got a very, very good uh, brown butter quality to it. Nice punch of cinnamon, allspice. Getting some of that dill, some tea, and like a green tobacco note in there. A little bit of spearmint. So I feel like at this point you can pretty much establish that I think it's good and I like it. I was very skeptical when I bought this. I've had Thomas H. Handy in the past, but yeah, it's a good pour. I get it. There's a reason the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection or BTAC, you know, for short, is so highly regarded. And sometimes you don't want it to be that good, but then sometimes it is just that good. And six years for a rye is kind of the sweet spot for most people. Now I do miss the, you know, the bullet 12 year old, 12 year old MGP 95.5 and those old 10, you know, eight, nine, 10 year old ryes of the past. Uh, there's some out there now that you're paying a pretty penny for it, which would be in line with this, but you know, give or take, but there's just something about the 51% or 60% or whatever this is. I know it's less than 70. We'll go that route. It's not a 95.5. But I want to say Buffalo Trace is Thomas H. Handy. They have two rye mash bills. One's a 51% and one is a like 65, 68. I don't know which one this one is. But there's just something about that Kentucky rye at cast strength, aged a good six years. It just kind of works. It just kind of works. And I'm the first guy to admit when I don't like something or I think it's overpriced, but I would happily pay, you know, 150 bucks after tax or even 150 retail for a Thomas H. Handy again. Uh, if I could get a 2022 bottle, for 150 bucks, I would. Now, I'm, there's a limit on this. People who are paying five, six, seven hundred dollars for a BTAC item, you know, I get it. Uh, George T. Stagg is on average 15 years old in cash strength. William Larue Weller is 12 years old on, on average in cash strength. Sazerac 18 is 18 years old. You Rare 17 is 17 years old. Those all have age statements to back it up. And they all are supposed to retail for the same exact price. At the end of the day, you know, if you're paying four, five, six, seven hundred dollars for these bottles, just to have them, I mean, nothing is going to live up to that price point. This, this to me tastes like a hundred and fifty dollar bottle. I would be so happy paying one hundred fifty bucks for another one. You know, or plus tax at at six percent. If you want to sell me one for one hundred fifty plus six percent tax, hell yeah, I'll do it. I'll put in one hundred seventy on this. No way in hell would I ever see myself paying secondary for this at 500 bucks. I just, it's the only BTAC I own. I own zero Pappy. I've, I've got plenty of Weller products, Taylor products, and I love Eagle Rare. Pretty much only have store picks of Eagle Rare, not to be bragging. And I know Buffalo Trace products. I've, I've been around for a while and I just, I don't see the need to hunt for things when there's so much other stuff on the shelf, but if you've got the time or you've got the money and you just want to cut, you know, time is money and you just want to save yourself a few coins or save yourself a few coins and pay secondary, do it. But most likely it is not going to live up to that standard. That being said, let's have one final nose, one final sip and sign off. Now that it's opened up a bit more, the ethanol is kind of gone. The beginning is kind of sharp, pungent, tannic, getting more of the mint and tea and honey those earthy notes in there, but they're nice and soft. Uh, you get a hint of the ethanol. It's not too much, but it's got a nice clove note on the undertone to back it up. Let's give it a taste. Black pepper, clove, all that orange peel. Still getting that light cherry. Love that. I mean, it's almost a rye old fashioned, but at cash strength, a little bit of mint and tea. Still getting that tobacco -y note in there, the leather. It's a fantastic whiskey. So let me know below what you guys think. Are you a fan of BTAC and Pappy Van Winkle and all those crazy bottles from Buffalo Trace? Would you pay secondary? Would you hunt for this? Do you hunt for this? Do you pay secondary? Let's chat below. No judgment at all. Your time is your time. Your money is your money. Even if I don't agree with it, you don't agree with me. 
Let's talk good whiskey. What do you guys think of Thomas H. Handy and the BTAC collection? Let me know below. Have a great day. Cheers, y'all.